When Degeneration X formed at the end of 1997, Shawn Michaels and Triple H became the WWF's two most controversial superstars. Along with the controversy came a huge amount of popularity though, and while Shawn Michaels was used to such superstardom, Triple H would be getting his first taste of true main event status. There's no denying that Triple H was initially the sidekick of Shawn Michaels. HBK was the WWF champion at the end of 1997, while Hunter was feuding with the likes of Sgt. Slaughter and Owen Hart. But still, DX was Triple H's launching pad onto bigger and better things. When HBK was forced into an early retirement in 1998, Triple H told the world that Shawn Michaels dropped the ball and Hunter was going to pick it up and run with it. Triple H began his very own Degeneration X faction, and DX's popularity, along with Hunter's spot on the cards, continued to rise. Triple H would become the WWF Champion in Shawn's absence, solidifying himself as one of the WWF's biggest superstars. Hunter was smart enough to mainly work as a heel, the babyface picture in the WWF was getting a little overcrowded with guys like Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock, and so Triple H focused on becoming the company's most dominant bad guy, something that fans still, to this very day, give Triple H a lot of flack for. Still, it worked, the game Triple H ruled over the WWE for for quite a long period of time, and the beginning of all of this success can be pinpointed right back to the birth of D-Generation X. Fast forward to 2002, and Shawn Michaels returns to the WWF to join the New World Order. In reality, Shawn wasn't planning on wrestling ever again, he would be a kind of spokesperson for the NWO, adding some much needed star power to the faction after Scott Hall and Hulk Hogan had left the group. A storyline began where the NWO would try to recruit Triple H, with Shawn Michaels and Kevin Nash saying their fellow click buddy belongs in the heel faction. Kevin Nash ended up getting injured, the NWO faction and storyline was scrapped, but the story of Shawn's relationship with Hunter was was salvaged. At the Vengeance 2002 pay-per-view, Triple H had to decide if he wanted to sign with the Raw brand or the SmackDown brand, and it was Hunter's past friendship with Shawn Michaels that convinced the game to sign with Raw. So it seemed like there was a reunion of sorts going on here, fans were pleased that Shawn and Hunter were on the same page once again, and all seemed well. An official DX reunion was booked for the July 22nd 2002 episode of Monday Night Raw, the night after the Vengeance pay-per-view, but Triple H legitimately shocked everyone when he decided to pedigree Shawn Michaels in the middle of the ring. D-Generation X wasn't going to return anytime soon. The next week on Raw, Shawn Michaels spent most of the evening searching for Triple H backstage. Hunter explained in the ring that the idea was for Shawn Michaels to become the manager of Triple H, but Shawn's ego got in the way as usual. Shawn wanted to do the whole DX thing and hog Triple H's spotlight. Triple H said that Shawn's career was over, his back was too busted up, and there's no way that HBK could be Hunter's equal in 2002. During the promo, a stage manager interrupted Hunter to tell the game that Sean had been hurt in the parking lot. Triple H runs back and there is Sean laid out on the floor. Triple H seems concerned, he calls for help, and what we have now is a whodunit story. Who had taken out the showstopper? We wouldn't have to wait long to find out the answer. Sean reveals the following week that a security camera caught footage of the attack, and it was Hunter who attacked the heartbreak kid. Triple H admitted, saying he was trying to teach Sean a lesson and show HBK that he was weak. Sean surprised the world when he said he'd be healed up by SummerSlam. A challenge was laid out by the heartbreak kid. Sean would make his comeback in a match against Triple H at the biggest event of the summer. Fans were excited to see if Sean could still go. So, the overall story told here was about the changing of time. There was once a superstar and his sidekick who pioneered a change in professional wrestling, but the superstar was forced out of action and the sidekick took over. Years later, a planned reunification was ruined due to egos, and now that old sidekick was now the megastar who wanted to teach his old friend a lesson. 
Triple H said that he used Shawn Michaels to get to the top the same way Shawn used him to stay at the top and now their friendship was worthless. There was nothing for Triple H to gain from reuniting with Shawn Michaels. The spotlight just wasn't big enough for both men. Shawn wanted revenge for Triple H turning his back on their old relationship. The old lion admitted that he maybe can't perform the same way he once could but he wasn't turning up to SummerSlam to wrestle his old friend, he was turning up for a fight. The Shawn Michaels vs Triple H match was booked as a non-sanctioned match, a great term the WWE would use when, in storyline, the company didn't want to take any responsibility for injuries that could occur during a bout. The story was great here, everything was set in place. The big question going into SummerSlam then was whether Shawn Michaels could still work, could he still be the showstopper? Or, even worse, was he risking a legitimate injury by stepping back into the ring? Triple H said, He was scared, his wife was scared and his mom was scared to death. She couldn't even speak. I said to her, I will not let anything happen to your boy. For me, that was the number one goal. Get Sean back where he needed to be, but perfectly safe. Give him the match that he needed to have. It was a tough spot and I put a lot of pressure on myself. I just wanted it to be perfect for him. The SummerSlam 2002 match was, in a word, outstanding. Behind the scenes, Hunter reassured Sean's family that HBK was in safe hands and the two men went out to the ring and put on one of 2002's best matches and one of the greatest matches in SummerSlam history. The non-sanctioned street fight allowed Sean to brawl a lot more. The match type suited someone who was maybe a little wary of their in-ring abilities, so the Heartbreak Kid was able to look really good without having to worry too much about his actual in-ring abilities. But with that said, Sean did the display a lot of his old HBK moveset, there were some real daredevil moments that kept fans on the edge of their seats. It's like the guy had never been away from the ring at all. Triple H was able to lay in some brutal attacks that zoned in on Sean's injured back. I mean, some of this stuff legitimately made you wonder how Sean didn't get hurt. But Hunter was a man of his word. He reassured that Sean would come out of the match absolutely fine, and that's exactly what happened. HBK got the win, the audience went absolutely insane for the finish, and to ensure Triple H kept his heat, the game attacked Sean with a sledgehammer after the bell had rung. It was an excellent match. Sean really should have been able to perform the way he did. You could see his confidence come back as the match went on and really it's mandatory viewing for wrestling fans. Sean wasn't sure if he was going to keep wrestling after SummerSlam though. This was supposed to be a one and done deal but Michaels just had one of the best performances of his career. It would have been crazy to not keep the momentum going. Not long after SummerSlam, Triple H was awarded the World Heavyweight Championship by Eric Bischoff. The whole point here was to have a main event title on both SmackDown and Raw, so SmackDown held on to the WWE Championship while Raw would have the World Heavyweight title. This gave Shawn Michaels an opportunity to step back into the title picture and after reassurances from Triple H and Vince McMahon, Shawn decided to step into the very first Elimination Chamber match held at Survivor Series 2. 2002. Triple H defended the world title against five other guys and Shawn Michaels was able to win the whole match and become a main event champion once again. Throughout all of this, Shawn was still unsure if he would stick around. His plan now was to drop the title back to Hunter at the following pay-per-view, Armageddon, and then Shawn would gracefully leave the WWE once again, having just gotten some closure on his career. The Armageddon match was good too. It didn't have that curiosity factor in regards to Sean's in-ring abilities, but still, it's an entertaining match. Sean and Hunter worked a three stages of hell match here. The first fall would be a street fight, the second fall was a steel cage match, and the third and final fall would be contended in a ladder match. The match of course saw every match type get presented, a 40 minute war that saw Triple H recapture the world title and another Triple H vs Shawn Michaels showdown that you should take the time to watch. Something that should be plain to see here is that the Shawn Michaels vs Triple H series was filled with hard hitting, brutal matches. You were always guaranteed a physical bout when these two met on pay per view. 
After the Armageddon match, Sean felt there was still some gas left in the tank. WrestleMania was approaching, there was a chance here to go back to the grandest stage of all and put on another show-stopping performance. Sean signed a full-time contract and HBK would move into a feud with Y2J Chris Jericho. The two men would steal the show at WrestleMania, while Triple H defended the world title against Booker T. Shawn Michaels and Triple H though would continue their feud in the background. These two were far from done, but it was smart to allow both men to face new competitors. Shawn could have a ton of matches with guys he had never worked with before, while Triple H would begin building his evolution stable. For me, Shawn had truly return during and after the Wrestlemania 19 match with Chris Jericho. The Triple H matches up until this point were great, but as previously mentioned, Sean's bouts with Hunter were always brutal and physical. When Sean wrestled Jericho, he was able to refocus on telling stories through wrestling without the need for gimmick matches and brutality. I feel that the Y2J match did wonders for Shawn Michaels in the long run. But anyway, let's move forward and look at some of the more obscure television matches that featured both Triple H and Shawn Michaels during this time period. One week after WrestleMania 19, Shawn Michaels teamed with Booker T in a winning effort against Triple H and Chris Jericho. After the bout, Jericho, Flair and Hunter tried to handcuff Shawn Michaels to the ring ropes in order to decimate HBK with a steel chair, but Kevin Nash returned to the WWF to make sure the attack didn't happen. The following week, Triple H would force Kevin Nash to make a choice. Big Sexy could stick with Shawn Michaels or Nash could join Triple H to form a devastating team that would take over the WWE. Triple H would end up making the decision for Big Kev with a low blow. And all this would lead to a six man tag team match at Backlash 2003 where Chris Jericho, Triple H and the nature boy Ric Flair defeated Kevin Nash, Booker T and Shawn Michaels. The June 2nd 2003 episode of Raw featured Nash and Michaels teaming up with the Hurricane to take on Evolution, Triple H, Ric Flair and Randy Orton. Evolution were able to get the win here. There were a few fun little spots during this match and I actually enjoyed watching this one back. Up next was the second Elimination Chamber match that happened at SummerSlam 2003, featuring Shawn Michaels, Randy Orton, Kevin Nash, Bill Goldberg, Chris Jericho and defending champion Triple H. Hunter was able to get the win here. The game's attention was shifted over to Goldberg during this time period, while HBK had his hands full with Evolution and Chris Jericho. The September 1st, 2003 episode of Raw featured another six-man tag, Hunter, Flair and Orton taking on Shawn Michaels, Goldberg and Maven. The babyfaces won the match and honestly, you don't really need to see this one. The Triple H vs Shawn Michaels feud would get a little quiet for a while after this match. We would see HBK team up with Rob Van Dam to face Hunter, Flair and Batista towards the end of the year, but things would seriously heat up on the final Raw episode of 2003. In San Antonio, Texas, Triple H defended the world title against Shawn Michaels in another excellent bout. This one has been somewhat forgotten due to it being a Raw match, but go out of your way to hunt this one down. The match goes on for around 30 minutes, there's much less of a reliance on brutality and instead both men go out and have a very entertaining wrestling match. The referee ends up taking a bump which causes Raw GM Eric Bischoff to come down the ringside and Eric ends up refereeing the match. Sean hits the sweet chin music falling on top of Triple H. One, two, three. Sean's music plays in the arena and we have ourselves a new World Heavyweight Champion. One slight problem though, HBK's shoulders were also on the mat. Eric Bischoff announces the match is a draw and Triple H is still the World Heavyweight Champion. I can't stress this enough, go and watch this match, a true forgotten classic from Monday Night Raw's extensive match catalogue. With the controversy surrounding this HBK vs Triple H match on Raw, the rivalry was started right back up. The Michaels vs Helmsley series wasn't finished yet, and up next was one of my absolute favourite matches of this entire feud. At the 2004 Royal Rumble, Shawn Michaels would get another shot at the World Heavyweight Championship. HBK and Triple H would try to settle their differences in a last man standing match, and if you thought Shawn and Hunter's past battles were physical, then 
then you're in for a big surprise. The last man standing match is an absolute war from start to end. Sean gets busted open early in the showdown and the match turns into a survival test for the heartbreak kid. When Sean is able to open up Triple H, HBK's hope is restored and the two men go on to completely tear each other apart. With both guys absolutely destroyed, Sean hits the super kick at the end of the match, both men fall to the floor and the referee begins the 10 count. Neither Sean nor Hunter are able to stand up, we have yet another tie and Triple H remains the world heavyweight champion. At the very same pay per view, Chris Benoit was able to win the Royal Rumble match and therefore Benoit had the right to choose which champion to face at Wrestlemania. Shawn Michaels wanted to fight Hunter at Wrestlemania, HBK wanted to finish the rivalry in Madison Square Garden and put Triple H behind him and the only way he could do that was by beating him on the grandest stage of all. Chris Benoit though decided to jump over to Raw to challenge the World Heavyweight Champion at Wrestlemania so HBK wasn't going to get his one on one match after all. In the end, Raw's Sheriff Steve Austin motivated HBK enough to get himself involved in the title picture and Sean was slotted into the Wrestlemania main event, making the World Heavyweight Championship bout a triple threat match featuring Chris Benoit, Shawn Michaels and Triple H. Chris Benoit won the match in the subsequent rematch at Backlash the following month, but all of this really didn't do anything to end the Michaels vs Helmsley rivalry. Both Sean and Hunter tried to get their hands on the World Heavyweight title, but they consistently interfered in each other's matches. It was clear as day that these two needed to settle the score once and for all. And so a Hell in a Cell match was booked for the Bad Blood pay per view held on June 13th 2004. The Hell in a Cell match started before the end of Bad Blood's second hour, so you knew this was going to be another long match here. Maybe it was a touch too long. Now in saying that, I still really like this Hell in a Cell match, it wasn't the best match to be held inside the steel structure, but at the same time, I really enjoyed watching these two go at it, so personally, I still get tons of enjoyment out of this main event, but I also understand why others may not like it so much. It's over 45 minutes long and because both men knew this match should finish the rivalry, HBK and Hunter tried to put on a slow burning classic that involves a ton of selling along with a lot of comeback moments. I think both men were trying to live up to expectations in a way here, feeling they had to over deliver and because the match went on for so long, they maybe lost some fan interest mid match. I do agree that they could have shaved around 10 minutes off the bout and it still would have been a good match. Don't quote me on this but I'm pretty sure that the Bad Blood Hell in a Cell match here is the longest Hell in a Cell match in history. Still I enjoyed it, Triple H gets the win with the pedigree after both men spent every last drop of energy they had to spare. They really left it all in the ring at Bad Blood 2004. If you're in the mood to settle in and watch a long match that builds and builds, then this Hell in a Cell match is still very much recommended, but you do need to be in the right mood for it. Anyway, with Hell in a Cell being used to end rivalries, this would be the end of the HBK vs Helmsley feud. Or so we thought. Around 4 months later, the WWE presented the very first Taboo Tuesday show, a unique pay per view where fans would vote online on match participants and stipulations. Fans could vote for either Shawn Michaels, Chris Benoit or Edge to face World Heavyweight Champion Triple H and you guessed it, Shawn was voted in and so we have yet another HBK vs Triple H match on pay per view. What's notable about this match is that Shawn had legitimately torn his meniscus on the Raw episode that aired the night before Taboo Tuesday and he needed to go away and have surgery but still Shawn showed up at the pay per view, he was put into a World Heavyweight title match and Sean still went out there struggling to walk during his entrance 
and he ended up having another good match with his biggest rival. Edge ended up interfering at the end of the bout, hitting Sean with a spear that allowed Triple H to eventually pin Michaels and retain the title, and after the match, Sean had to disappear to get that knee surgery. I remember watching this Taboo Tuesday match and thinking it was all a ruse. I thought Sean was playing possum and he was going to reveal mid-match that he faked the injury to get the upper hand, but that just didn't happen. Sean worked hurt and man it really shows. A lot of people say the Taboo Tuesday and Cyber Sunday events were a work. People say the voting was rigged, but I don't believe it was, at least for certain matches. HBK was in no shape to compete at Taboo Tuesday 2004, he needed to take time off, and while I personally think the WWE would do all they could to sway the votes, I still don't think it was a work. Still, I consider the Taboo Tuesday match to be the end of the rivalry. Both men moved on to separate feuds with Shawn Michaels going on to have another WrestleMania Classic with Kurt Angle, while Triple H would lose his heavyweight championship to Dave Batista. While the feud had ended with Triple H becoming the overall victor, the two men would have further one on one matches down the road. Sean defeated Hunter in a boot camp match at the 2005 Holiday with the Troop show, and in 2006, Sean and Hunter had another singles match on Raw that ended in a no contest thanks to interference from Vince McMahon. Just a few short months after this match, Shawn Michaels and Triple H would finally reunite, and DX was back in World Wrestling Entertainment. Years later, in 2009, HBK and Triple H, while still in DX, wrestled against each other and John Cena at the Survivor Series in a triple threat WWE Championship match. John Cena got the win. Back in 1997, Triple H must have thought that his on-screen alliance with Shawn Michaels would do wonders for his career. The original Degeneration X done a lot to elevate Hunter to the next level, and when Shawn retired for the first time, Triple H was given a golden opportunity to carry on the DX name. I think Triple H would be the first to tell you that he owes a lot of his success to Shawn Michaels, whether that's thanks to HBK's backstage stroke or not. Without Shawn Michaels, Triple H's journey would have been very, very different. When Shawn was able to make the comeback of a lifetime in 2002, the natural story was always going to be the implosion of Degeneration X, and the story was so good that both men were able to stay bitter rivals for nearly four years. That, to me, says a lot about how popular the original DX were. Sean and Hunter were only together on screen for around seven months during the old DX days, yet afterwards we were given years of Sean vs Hunter matchups, all stemming from the original Degeneration X faction. The term good friends better enemies was used for Sean's feud with Big Daddy Cool Diesel in 1996, but I find it much more suitable for the HBK vs Triple H rivalry. I'm a DX fan, but if Sean and Hunter have to share a ring, I'd always vote for them to be on opposing sides rather than together as a team. Their matches against each other were always good. They knew each other so well that nothing was off limits in terms of physicality, and the two original degenerates told stories inside the squared circle instead of just going through the motions. Having that friendship and history helps so much with feuds and rivalries. Look no further than Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa in modern times. It just adds a whole lot more when there's a meaningful backstory. Anyway, that's everything. I've left out quite a few tag matches and six-man tag encounters in this video because they aren't really needed to tell the story. There's a great Sean vs Hunter video on the WWE Network that covers the rivalry too. If you want more HBK vs Triple H, I advise checking that out. But thanks for watching and hopefully you stick around for the next upload on the channel.